as I race around all these dirt tracks throughout America, I have these mom and dads come up to me all the time, Rusty, and the, and they'll say, man, my, my kid's won 14 championships. He's 10 years old. How do I make it to NASCAR? And it, it's hard to tell people, you know, what they need to do because when, when I rode with you and I rode on your coattails and I was with you in that truck and trailer, we just did what you told us to do. And, and man, we were in victory lane all the damn time. Uh, now, as we move forward and, and you, you did, you did get aggravated for a while because there were drivers coming into the sport like Jeff Gordon or Ricky Rudd. They really didn't even know their race car. Uh, what do you think about that when drivers don't know their car and they run good? Oh man, it, I, I don't want everybody to be like me. This was the only <laughs> way. This was the only way I knew how to do it. So I yeah. just had to do it my own way, you know. And, yeah. And I've had conversations with Gordon a couple times when we got heated. Are we were at the track? And uh, a couple times after I quit driving the car in 05, uh, I was broadcasting for ESPN, and I was with. Uh, watching him struggle at Michigan. And I went down there and he was testy because he was frustrated and this and that. And I said, you need to pay some more attention to that car. And he spun around. He said, well, if you had let the crew do it on your half, you'd have probably won more races. You focus too much. I'm like, Oh, okay. Now we're really going to debate that. And I just went down to tell him that, you know, he was kind of acting like he was giving up on himself because he was kind of lost at that day in Michigan. And I wanted him to pay more attention, you know, Instead, he flipped it on me, hmm. which is okay. But um, I tell you that, hey, there's great race drivers out there. I mean, you had uh, did that guy right there. You're talking about uh, Jeff Gordon. I mean, Tony Stewart. Uh, there's a guy that is involved in this car more than people think, you know. Who else can I throw in there? You know, you mentioned Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd was a uh, hell of a driver. He can really manhandle and carry a car. I mean, a great road racer. Great short track racer. Maybe you didn't see him working on a car, but there's one thing I respected about those type of guys. They could flat drive, you know? Yeah. Um, I got problems that with people that don't understand the car and aren't too good at drivers, but they're in a top position. Yeah. I said, there's so much more room for more talented people than that, that the way that's happening. So I, I don't, I don't want to go no farther than that, except that, you know, I, I just, if you're going to be, Man, if you're going to be a professional driver, be all in, you know, just be all in. That's all I'm asking. Right. So I, I think I've laid the groundwork. Uh, the reason Rusty Wallace was so good from my viewpoint, and I wanted to hear yours, is that you knew how to make your race car go good. When, when people talk to me about you, I say, Rusty is a gadgeteer. He'll, he'll figure things out. If we had things broke around the house, Rusty was the one that was going to fix it. So, Let's move forward now, but in that same conversation. So here we are now, year 2023. I had to take a look. <laughs> yep, we're in 2023, brother. And, and now we're plugging computers into the motors to tune them. Now we have cars that, you know, simulate some type of an Indy car look, the turtle shell bottom. Uh, a lot of carbon fiber. And now the driver, you know, the, the, the car is so numb, they don't feel the car do anything except pushing or loose. What is your what is your thought about these drivers now? And as, as you do MRN radio and you listen, what about these drivers now? It's hard for them to be somebody like you were. Well, it's, it's kind of like these drivers that we really maybe didn't know real well. Let them really show their talent. Uh, when you make a car basically identical from car to car, uh, I mean, NASCAR's got stringent rules and, and, and the, the templates and all the stuff they use are right down to the thousandths of an inch. Uh, they have to be the same. They, you, know, they, you can't buy these parts from all type of different people. I mean, if, if you're going to buy a part for a NASCAR car, it's got to come from that particular vendor. If you're going to buy a, a wheel part, it's got to come from one vendor. So basically, when it's all said and done, these cars are identical. So what that's enabled people to do, it's enabled drivers that we might not see as front runners because they never were involved in the best cars in the back because the cars were so much different. And 
I had no problem with the cars being different because they let everybody be inventive. I mean, they operated under the same rules. They did their deal maybe better than other people. But when you take all that out and now you go, okay, here's the car. Maybe you can do it better than other people, but you can't because here's the rules and this is the car. So now the cars are all the same. Let's see what these drivers can do. And so you see a guy like Ross Chastain, which I always knew was a pretty good driver, but I never thought he was a great driver up front all the time. And now we see him up front all the time, you know, uh, William Byron. There's a guy that I've always uh, looked at as a young man that, uh, you know, real studious fella that was real quiet and I never heard of him. And all of a sudden here he is winning five races this year. You know, you see these drivers that you never focused on. You knew they were out driving, but I was looking at Kevin Harvick's and I was looking at guys like that, you know, Kyle Busch's, uh, the, the normal guys week in and week out. And uh, so now I look at those guys, but these other guys are there all the time too now. And this car is really big superstars out of some drivers that I never, ever put a lot of focus in. And maybe it's really got these, these guys, these, uh, these drivers that I'm seeing now that I didn't pay attention to, it's, it's, it's turning them into superstars. It's giving those guys a lot of confidence in yourself that they're just as good as anybody else out there. But I would have never known that unless this car would have come out where it was identical so where they could all get in and show their talent. So I want to, I want to get to a lot more MRN. I want to get to your opinion on Ryan Priest and how you compare all your flips. But, but as you're talking, I'm listening really well. Uh, when I think of racing in the past, I think of your car owner, the great Roger Penske, uh, Richard Childers, Jack Roush, all these great car owners that knew that if they built the best team and the, the best cars that, you know, they were going to win. Now, you know, listening to what you say, and I agree with you, by the way, now you got car owners coming in, they buy the car like a kit car, and then they hire some people to put it all together and they're competitive. Is that good or bad for the sport? Well, I, I hear exactly where you're coming from on that one. Uh, the, the good thing about the sport is that it's, it's, it's got new, new, new people coming in that we've never seen before. It, we're creating new superstars, okay? And yeah. whether I like it or not, the, the race fans like that. They want to see new superstars. I mean, that, that fellow from Australia – who won the Chicago street race. Yeah. Where did that come from? Right. Yeah. <laughs> where, where this guy? I've never heard of this guy in my entire life, but then you research that guy and he's a, he's a three or four time world champion in, in supercars over in that area. You know? It's a big world. So, so it makes sense that he, he ran as good as he did, but I never heard of him and didn't know nothing. He just jumped in a car that he's never seen in life, you know, and just wheeled it around and won. Uh, but then when you got, you know, uh, Penske and Roush and Childress and Netflix spending and all the money, all the money on development to, you know, build a better car and have faster pit stops and all that to all be neutralized and say, okay, I got all new rules now. Now you can't do none of that stuff any longer that you spent your life doing. Yeah. Uh, that's frustrating. But um, you got to understand that you're still messing with them springs. You're still messing with them shocks. And you're still got to have a fast pit crew. You still can't screw up on that pit stop. And as a driver, you come, can't come down pit road too fast. And, you know, still every single week when I'm broadcasting these races, they're still messing that up. They're still speeding on pit road. They're still messing up the pit stop, you know. Maybe the guy should have shot it up high on the top side on a restart. And he decided to go down in the middle and crashed, you know. So things are there's so many moving parts that you can still have an influence on, even though the car has been dumbed down and they're real simple and they're exactly the same for everybody. Um, it's, it's still that you, know, you can still have a human hand that messes everything up. And there's still a lot of things you can do to uh, be a great car owner and uh, feel like you're, you got the best team because of how hard you're working. Cause there's still a lot of room out there to play with the car and yeah. ways to manipulate the race, the outcome of the race.